In the 17th century, Albrecht Dürer came up with an idea to draw himself, also known as a self-portrait, which he brought into the art world. Throughout the 17th century, this technique diffused and many artists have viewed this technique, but some with a twist. Some have secretly included themselves into their own paintings. For example, Caravaggio and Diego Velasquez are among the many who have done this. Their paintings, The Taking of Christ by Caravaggio and Las Meninas by Diego Velasquez, will be the ones analyzed to support the theme of having their self-portraits included in their own separate paintings. I will also compare them. But first, we will talk about each artist and their painting before going into the topic of why the artists include themselves in their paintings and so on. The Italian Baroque master Michelangelo Maurizi da Caravaggio, which Caravaggio is short for his name and goes by, had many influences on this composition. Durer, the one who first started self-portraits, was one of them. This is not only because Durer started self-portraits, but also because he made a woodcut in 1509 called Betrayal of Christ that consisted of Jesus, Judas, and the soldier, which also resembles in Caravaggio's painting. As you can see in these two artworks, Judas is seen kissing Jesus. And before we get into the taking of Christ itself, I just wanted to say that like his other paintings, this painting has all the features associated with his artworks. A dramatic story, chiaroscuro lighting, expressive figures, and magnificent details. So the taking of Christ by Caravaggio. This oil on canvas painting painted in 1602 depicts the arrest of Jesus in a dark background as Judas kisses Jesus to help soldiers identify him and John the Evangelist screaming wildly. It also appears that St. John on the left is trying to flee as a soldier grabs his cloak. There are three soldiers and also a man holding a lantern to the scene who is believed to be Caravaggio himself depicted as age 31 in this picture. Caravaggio was an essential pioneer of the chiaroscuro technique, especially tenorism, which is an effect of contrast light and shadow created by light from a particular direction onto an object. Shadow would be used to emphasize lighter area, which in this painting is shown as light being shined upon Jesus and his disciples. This was typical of his paintings, such as this and the calling of Saint Matthew, which both portrayed a single light source illuminating the action. The action would be a frozen moment, and this use of light and dark contrast gave an extraordinary sense of drama, especially the expressions on the faces. His paintings combined the realistic observation of the physical and emotional human situation with the dramatic use of lighting. In this case, the light is shining onto Jesus and the audience can see the emotions of everyone in the painting. The faces of each figure show their feelings. Jesus conveys his anguish through his furrowed brow and eyes, yet the image also indicates to the audience to place forgiveness before revenge and engage in spiritual combat rather than physical, just like how Jesus is doing in this situation. St. John the Evangelist conveys the terrorized expression and the emotional intensity of the moment. After his death, Caravaggio's style spread rapidly throughout Europe, influencing many future artists, including Diego Velazquez, which makes Caravaggio connect to him. Diego Velazquez was known as a leading figure through the Spanish Golden Age of Art and Literature. He was also the court painter for King Philip IV of Spain. This was where his career took off. He was able to capture the physicality of his subjects, use loose brush strokes to create texture and the movement in clothing. Like Caravaggio, he would later be influential to future painters who would build on his foundations. Now in this painting, the royal family is depicted with Velasquez himself as the painter. From left to right is Velasquez who stands behind this huge campus, Maria Agustina Sarmiento, the first lady in waiting who offers water to the future empress the Infanta Margarita, Isabel de Velasco, the second lady in waiting who curtsies, and the two female dwarfs, Mira Barbola next, and Nicolas de Pertusado, who teasingly kicks the sleepy dog on the floor. Behind them is the lady's governess, Marcella de Uloa, and an usher. Standing in the open doorway is the marshal of the Queen's Palace, who draws aside a curtain through which light enters. The setting is also based on Valles Quez's painting studio. This painting has asymmetrical composition as one side has more people than the other so it draws the audience's eyes toward the middle. It is said that he may be painting a portrait of King Philip IV and Queen Mariana. This is inferred from the mirror on the far wall. Others say that it is a reflection of a mirror image in which the royal couple is standing. This question will unfortunately never be resolved. With that said, the last thing to mention is that Velasquez wanted to give the audience the king's point of view so he painted himself in the painting to let them stand in the king's shoes. But before we compare these two artworks and why the artists are included in their paintings, a brief summary of the characteristics of Baroque art. In Baroque art, motion was exaggerated and clear details were used to produce drama. Motion was exaggerated in the taking of Christ 
as there was movement within the figure's body placement. We can see here that a soldier was reaching his hand out to grab Christ. In this picture, we can also see the minor details that were drawn, for example, the armor of the soldier. Furthermore, Las Meninas had motioned through the figure's bodies and facial expressions. The girl on the left seems concerned as she gives the future empress water. The empress herself is in a prominent position. We can also see here the details of the children's clothes and the flowers they are wearing. The images are direct and dramatic and draws the viewer in to participate which is another factor of Burrogar. The depictions also seem real and there are dramatic contrasts between the light and dark. This is seen in Las Meninas as the room behind the children is dark and the light only focuses on the children and Velasquez which draws the audience's eye toward the foreground of the painting. In the taking of Christ, like mentioned before, it is shown as light shining on Jesus while the soldiers have dark armor making Jesus stand out. Diagonal lines, which are also part of Baroque art, created powerful effects of movement. As we can see, it helped contrast light and dark, which affects movement as a whole. These all characterize Baroque art. The taking of Christ and Las Meninas are similar because, well, the artists themselves have included their self-portrait into their paintings. However, they had different reasons to do so. Caravaggio liked to include himself in his own works. He liked to do this so often that it became a part of who he was as an artist. He also did this for personal study and to even promote himself as an artist. In this particular case, he may have drawn himself because there were many similar paintings of the taking of the Christ at that time and he wanted to make his painting unique and different from others. On the other hand, Velasquez included himself in his own paintings to imply that he works for the court of royalty and is an important part of King Philip IV's paintings. Growing up, he was not of noble lineage, so he had difficulty, but being hired for the royal court must have made him proud of himself. That explains why he positioned himself in a prominent position and why he included the king and queen in the far wall mirror. Like mentioned earlier, he also wanted to give the audience the point of view from where the king would be standing so he might have included himself in Las Minas, Meninas as well. It's just another possible reason. Additionally, these two paintings relate to each other in other ways because for one, they are both categorized as broke paintings in Italy and Spain. Moreover, Caravaggio and his artworks influenced many future artists such as Diego Velasquez. Velasquez was actually inspired by Caravaggio which is pretty neat because it shows how art can be passed through many years and can inspire people. This can be proved because his early style resembles that of Caravaggio. So in conclusion, these two paintings had a very similar connection. Like how all art has relations to another despite the time periods, these two have a unique relationship. Caravaggio's style influenced Velasquez and they obviously both had similar styles as a result. That led to the two artworks including the artist's own self-portraits as they were a means to support and promote themselves as who they were. On top of that, they were both Baroque artworks and influenced many artists in the future. On top of these sources, I used Wikipedia as my base and also used Prof D's amazing PDF files.